Okay, we have it to an annoying integral. We've got the integral from zero to one of natural log one minus x to the fourth dx. And why do I say it's annoying? It's just the one minus x to the fourth. Now when we have natural log, typically we're gonna wanna use integration by parts on it, or that's kind of the first thing I think of. But when I did it, if I just go ahead right away and do integration by parts on it, it's not that great because then you kind of end up with something with x to the fourth in it. It's fine, but it just takes a few extra steps. For some reason, I was feeling pretty lazy on this one, and I kind of wanted the integral to just do itself. But I did find a way to avoid just doing integration by parts straight away, so maybe I found a slight improvement, maybe like a less worse method, if I can say that. If you've got a better way in the comments, please let me know. I'm just kind of curious if there's some nice way to do this. So before I do integration by parts with the DI method over here, I do want to factor it first, so we've got difference of two squares here, so I can write this as 1 plus x squared times 1 minus x squared, and then do it again, bring down this piece, and then factoring out this part again with difference of two squares, 1 plus x, 1 minus x. And with this all being inside of the natural log, we can break this up with log properties and write it as natural log 1 plus x squared plus natural log one plus x plus natural log of the last part one minus x. And then this way we can integrate this as three separate integrals. These two are really easy. This one, there's still some steps to this, but it's a little easier than what we started with. And it's a little nicer because we've got a plus sign in it. Okay, now that we have this broken up as three integrals, I'm just gonna focus on the first one. We'll do integration by parts using the DI method. I can just kind of create a one right there to integrate and differentiate the natural log part. Now, differentiating this, we're going to get 1 over 1 plus x squared. Then chain rule on x squared is going to bring a 2x into the numerator. Integrating 1, that's just an x. So then we're going to have part of the solution for this on the diagonals x ln 1 plus x squared evaluated from 0 to 1. And then this other stuff is going to be an integral. Let's take minus 2 up front, and then we'll have this as just x squared over 1 plus x squared. But then in order to clean this up, let me just add a plus one on it. That way, this is gonna cancel the one. I don't wanna change it so we can subtract one, but then let's use the minus one to break it off and to create another integral. So minus one times minus two is gonna be plus two. Let me see if I can fit this in right here. And now let's see if we can evaluate everything. This here is just gonna be a one. Coming down here, when you plug one in, you're gonna have one times natural log of two, so we're just gonna have natural log of two. You plug zero in, everything's gonna be zero, so let's leave that off. Then here, minus two, integral of one is gonna be just x evaluated from zero to one. And then here, this is just our arctan integral, so we're gonna have two times arctan of x evaluated from zero to one. And then let's just plug in and put everything up here with our part of our integral here. So this is gonna be natural log of two. Evaluating minus two, we plug a one and we just have a minus two. And then arctan at zero, zero, you plug one in, you get pi over four. Pi over four times two is gonna be plus pi over two. Now for these other two integrals, these should be easy. I'm just gonna do quick substitutions on them. You could probably kind of do it on the fly, but let's just do the substitution to make it all clear. So what's gonna happen on this first one, we'll do a u substitution for one plus x, then du is gonna be just dx. And then on this one here, I'll do a t substitution, one minus x, then dt is gonna be minus dx. We'll go ahead and substitute on this. So first here with the u substitution, adding one to the bounds, adding one to two, we're going two and this lower bound becomes a one. Then we just have natural log u du. Here, kind of similar on the second one, except when you plug in one, you get zero. You plug in zero, you get one. So we flipped our bounds around. This is gonna be ln t. And then you could rewrite this as dx equal minus dt. So we have a minus sign right here. But then use the minus sign to flip the bounds. And actually, I think I just came across this scenario in another video where what I wanna do on this is, we'll do a quick variable change, but it's a definite integral. I can change the variable. Let's make this a u. Let's get rid of this stuff so we're not confused. But now that we have the same variable and the bounds, there's no break. We're going zero to one, one to two. I can combine these and write these as the integral from zero to two, ln u, du. Just use the formula on this. Integral of ln u is gonna be u, ln u minus u evaluated from zero to two. You plug in two, you get two ln two 
minus two, then minus, when you plug zero in, so this one actually, this part's gonna be an indeterminate form, but you could use L'Hopital's rule on this, just bringing the u into the denominator, and you'll get a zero. And then you plug zero in here, and of course you get zero. So this part goes away, and all we're gonna to need to do is just add this to this for our solution. And so just adding up terms here and here, we're gonna get three ln two, minus two minus two is minus four, plus pi over two, and that's it. Okay, so I wasn't that pleased that I had to break it up into three integrals, but individually they weren't too bad, so I guess it's okay, but not my favorite method in the world. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.